Welcome to Maintenance Monday. In this video, I'm gonna explain everything that you need to know about headsets so that when it comes to adjusting yours, you know what to do and why. Before we start, if bike maintenance and all sorts of bike tech related stuff sounds like your sort of thing, then subscribe to GCN Tech, click on the bell icon to turn on your notifications. Right then, your headset is the term used when talking about the bearings and the other associated components that allow your bike to have steering and allow the handlebars to turn like this. In general terms, your headset consists of a lower and an upper bearing, a cap over the top to keep it all neat and tidy, some spacers, your stem, a top cap and a bolt to add some preload and keep everything together. The fork sits down here and you have a central steerer tube running all the way up through the middle that your stem is then connected to. Inside your steerer tube, you're gonna have an expander bolt like this if you have a carbon steerer tube or a star nut if your fork has a metal steerer tube. This section sits inside the fork by where the stem sits. Then on top of that, you have your top cap and bolt which thread down into this to create preload onto the system. Now the bearings used on modern bikes are sealed units with small individual ball bearings placed inside fitted with a rubber seal. This helps keep the grease inside and any dirt outside. Fitted to your bike you have the upper bearing and the lower bearing and they're sized and shaped specifically to fit different models and brands of bikes. Now it's important that you fit the correct bearing the correct way round to fit with a taper that is on the frame and on the lower portion of the fork. This is the lower bearing. On the outer edge you can see we've got a tapered angle and on the inner race we've also got another tapered face as well. The tapered face on the inner race of the bearing matches up with the angle which is tapered on the lower portion of the fork. That means that the bearing slides over the top such as that so that inner race has a smooth surface to sit against. The fork and the steerer then go up inside the head tube of the bike and the angles and faces of the outer surface of the bearing match up with what is on the inside of the frame. That means we get that nice flush finish there. Now as we move to the upper section of the headset we've got a very similar looking bearing but it is important to note that the lower and upper bearings on almost all bikes are slightly different but the principles remain the same. The tapered faces have to go the correct way around to match up with the taper that is inside the frame. So it slides over the top like this, the bearing then sits flush within the frame. Then we have another tapered little collar or compression ring such as this. The purpose of this is to slide over the steerer tube, sit down, push all the way tight and butt up against that angled inner surface of the inner race of the bearing. This creates a surface for the top cover to sit on and it also creates an additional layer of seal to keep out the dirt and the grime. On top of that compression ring or collar you have the bearing top cap which sits all the way over the top and creates a smooth flush finish to again offer protection for the bearing and then allows the spacers to be placed on top of here. Now talking about the spacers, some bikes will have more and some bikes will have less. However, if you're trying to be super cool, you'll have your stem slammed all the way down onto this bearing top cover. Or if you're trying to maybe be sensible or perhaps just actually get your bike to fit you correctly, you might have a spacer or two underneath your stem. We've got the top cap and bolt next. This threads down into the expander bolt, which is held securely in place in the steerer of your fork. Now this is the important part here because it's this top cap and bolts which allow you to add a little bit of preload into the whole system and remove any free play within the bearing or any of the additional components in there. Now if you're sat there wondering what on earth is free play? Well it's excess movement between the bearing races, the frame and the steerer tube which runs all the way up through the middle and it's movement that we don't want to be there. The only movement we want to allow is that rotational or twisting movement that's allowing the bike to steer. But the important part to remember is you don't have to do this up very tight and when you are trying to adjust it you should have the stem bolts loose so that any force that you apply through this top bolt goes all the way through all the bearings all the way down to the lower bearing as well that way you're going to apply that preload across the whole system apply too much force or preload down this top cap bolt 
and you're going to cause accelerated wear on the bearings and cause your steering to have noticeable resistance. If we're trying to put a number onto the force put through this top bolt, you're looking in the region of around two newton meters, but in essence, it should be as loose as possible whilst removing any free play from that system. Now, if you're having trouble with your headset and struggling to remove any excess play, there's a number of different reasons that you might be having that problem. It could be that you're trying to adjust the preload using the top cap and bolt, whilst the stem bolts are already done up tight. That means that preload isn't gonna work its way all the way down to the bearings, therefore it's gonna have the play in. It could be that the bearings are just worn out and have play within the units themselves, or it could be that you've recently just taken everything apart and haven't quite put it back together correctly, or you haven't got one of the parts the correct way round. So in that instance, I'd say take everything apart, clean it up, and check that you've fitted everything in the correct order. If that doesn't fix your issue, then it could be a trip down to the local bike shop for some further investigation. So onto the important part now, because having an understanding of how your headset works is great, but what you need to know is how to check it and then how to adjust it. So with your bike on level ground and the stem bolts loose, you can apply your front brake and then just gradually and gently rock the bike back and forth whilst feeling the upper and lower headset bearing. You can also listen and hear that little bit of knocking. So if that's the case, that's indicating that there's some free play in there. So you can take your hex wrench, in the case of this bike, three mil, and then apply a little bit of preload through the whole system using the top cap and the bolt. Now, you don't have to overly tighten this, and you wanna do it incrementally, and then apply that front brake, rock the bike back and forth until you've just removed any play in the system itself. Once you're happy that there's no free play left, you can then look to straighten up your handlebars, take your Allen key or hex wrench, tighten up the stem bolts to the specified torque limit, which in almost all cases is either stamped or printed on the back of your stem. And then, it's a job to good them. So they have it, a simple explainer of how to adjust the headset of your bike and also how it works, which means that's yet another component of your bike you have a better understanding of. Now, if you've ever run into any trouble with your headset, why not let us know in the comments section down below? Or why not let us know if there's any other components on your bike you'd like us to take a deeper dive and a closer look at? That's it for now. I'll um, see you next Monday. Bye.